Hello, and today we're gonna be working on ink wash. Um, so this is kind of like what ink looks like. Uh, it could be like this as well. Um, I'm gonna take you through, you know, the process of trying this material out. I'm assuming that you're a beginner, um, so I encourage you to try it with me. Uh, work along side what I'm doing and um, what we'll be doing is continuing the sort of progressive values drawing that I began with my last demo. If you didn't see that demo that's okay no worries you can just work along with me um, but first we're going to go through just a few exercises because I find that um, some of my students have been you know mentioning that it's a little bit harder to control so I think it's important to first you know Play around so that you don't feel too precious about a, sing a single image. See what the kinds of marks are that you can make with this tool. And then when you feel a little bit more comfortable, then go to more developed drawing that we'll work on for that progressive values piece. The ink wash is Eastern in origin and is almost always completed in black ink. A uh, traditional ink wash in its purest form requires years of discipline and practice. It was first used in Chinese art, and ink and wash painting was invented by Wang Wei during the era of the Tang Dynasty, which occurred from 618 to 907. And after further development, the technique spread to Japan around 1350 and peaked in popularity among Japanese artists and calligraphers during the Muromachi era, which occurred from 1338 to 1573. So as in calligraphy, the brush stroke in Chinese painting is less a means of applying an ink than a philosophical or emotional statement. Zen Buddhism and Confucianism are each associated with differing brush stroke styles and methodologies. The ink and wash artist positions the brush vertically above the surface of the paper and controls its rhythmic movements from his or her shoulders. So exact precision is needed in the form this form of oriental art as a brush stroke cannot be changed once it is made. Being less familiar with the traditional calligraphic arts, Western artists have tended to use ink more for preparatory story studies, literary and topological illustrations, than as a medium for straight painting. You know, inks used were typically made from either carbon-based materials like charcoal or from berries or dyes derived from insects or shellfish. However, more modern gum-based Indian ink is less prone to fading. The ink was originally applied using a dip pen. A number of old masters have used ink to create extremely fine works of drawing art. So, if you have you ever wondered where ink comes from, how it was invented, or how it was made? I do, certainly. Um, most of ink that we use today for printing newspapers or drawing is called India ink, although it was invented in China, as mentioned. Um, it uses carbon black or soot for pigment, but before this ink formula, formula actually reached Europe, artists and scientists used a type of ink based on iron, known as iron gall ink. So every other winter, I take a group of paint, drawing, painting, and illustration students to Italy. And among many works of Renaissance art, original drawings by Leonardo da Vinci can be seen in Florence, where we study. So there are plans of statues he commissioned to cast, sketches of human anatomy, and designs for fantastic devices. It is fascinating to see how well he could draw directly using pen and ink. So you might wonder where he got his ink from, which has turned brown with age. It wasn't originally brown, it actually was black in the beginning. So the ink that he used was called iron gall ink, or monastic ink. Iron gall ink was used for about 1400 years and only lost favor in the mid-1800s when India ink replaced it because it was cheaper and easier to make and produced a more consistent, longer-lasting black. But there's something to be said for artistic variety and richness of the shades of iron gall ink and how it was oxidized over time. So iron gall ink is a purple black or brown black ink made from iron salts and tannic acids from vegetable sources. It was standard uh, the standard ink formulation that was used in Europe between the 5th and 19th centuries. It remained in widespread use well into the 20th century and is still sold today if you want to try it out. Um, on one side, I'm going to do just kind of experimental marks um, playing around with what the ink can do. And on the other side, I'm going to work on, you know, trying to really render something nicely with that ink wash. Um, so what we'll do is, is just start with maybe a little bit more of the experimental work. Um, so I've got my bamboo brush. I've even got some other kinds of sizes brushes just to 
play around and see what I can do. Um, and my two different types of ink. You'll see me dipping into the water very often when I'm playing around with this. So we'll just start by doing a straight mark. And you'll notice with this tool that I'm working by just using my hand, my entire hand and not my finger movement, but my whole arm. So this was how things were done back when this uh, process first started in creating kind of Asian calligraphy, which is a beautiful way of working. So as you can see, if I'm just dipping straight into the ink, it's super black. So if I wanna make value, I make sure I dip into the water. So to create lighter tones, using a lot of water is actually quite important. So you can see that's quite light. And then if I dip into the ink and try to sort of gauge, you know, maybe a mid-tone, it's not as easy to figure out, is it? So I can push a little bit more water around, but remember that, you know, I had you get some paper towels. I can also, you know, do a test mark on the paper towel or kind of just try to push some of that uh, black off of the, the brush using that paper towel so it's not too, too dark. Um, the other fun thing is that um, you can do like wet on wet techniques. So you see here that that brush is already wet, that mark is already wet, and you see how that like almost becomes alive like an animal and how it spreads even in that wet moisture area. You may decide also that, you know, like you see here, my ink is getting, my water is getting pretty black already. So it might be a good idea to actually have two cups of water one with a light with less black into in it and one with more so that you can do more with these wet on wet techniques you can just lay some water down and then dip in the, the black ink a little bit and see how that makes some interesting marks and they can be really very beautiful so you can see here the types of marks that are made when you're working with you know this very wet brush so these edges that form that aren't drawn by me are actually called reticulation marks and they can be a really beautiful kind of abstracted addition to any drawing that you decide to produce. So I urge you to play around, you know, fill up the sheet of paper and see what kinds of marks you can make with that ink. You can trade, change brushes as well. You see if it's <clears throat> Interesting to use a smaller brush. The bamboo brush is actually really, um, <clears throat> you know, flexible brush to use because you can make larger marks or smaller brush marks because of that that very fine tip that it comes to. You see, very small mark versus something very broad. For this next drawing, I've got a, a second cup of water, which is just clear and then I have my first cup which is kind of like I suppose a mid gray at this point and then I have my straight ink. So to draw something that is more rendered and more specific um, it's a good idea to first begin with a pencil drawing and then build the drawing from there from the lighter lights to the darker tones. And also you'll notice that you know in the beginning I had this lamp next to me and I've set up a little bit more dramatic lighting, which is, is helpful with um, gauging on those values. So the first step in creating a work that's going to be a little bit more detailed or fine is to create a preparatory drawing with a, a light pencil. So here I'm working with a, a HB pencil to map out an, a general idea of the size and scale of the elements that I'm going to be drawing. So you can see here that it's not too dark because I want the, the drawing to be defined by my ink. Ink wash is like a hybrid inking and painting technique done with a brush instead of a pen. So value is controlled by your ink to water ratio. The more ink or less water, the greater your value. Because the medium is wet when it is applied, many consider ink wash a painting technique. 
we'll call it an art making technique and try not to get too technical. Um, so you can also, you know, purchase colored inks that can be used to create ink washes if you decide that you really enjoy this process. However, we'll begin with black and white until we get used to this material. So a good way to start, if you're to, if you're concerned about messing up, which you may be, you know, ink wash is a new material maybe for you, um, and it's something that once you lay down a color, you you can't really go back. So the best method is really to start by working with your lightest lights and working towards your darker darks. So do all the light tones across the entire image. Then take a break, let it sit and dry for a while, and then you can build up the next layer, the mid-tones, and then you can progress towards the darker tones until you fully defined that um, item that you're drawing. You, so you can see here that the form is building up, and over time I gradually get a full value range into that drawing. And so then the fun begins where, you know, you finish the drawing, you let it dry, it dries flat, and then you remove the tape, and then you've got a really nice crisp edge and a beautiful looking drawing that you can present to someone um, for exhibition, perhaps. All right, here's my paper. I've got um, my ink wash and a pencil, a 2H pencil to work with. I'm going to grab my masking tape. I'm going to move over to the second section of this paper here and I need to again kind of carefully tape down at least the two edges and then cover the other two sections with a newsprint here. So with this progressive drawing you'll notice that we're working progressively from messy materials to uh, cleaner, cleaner materials. And with our charcoal, we were we were using you know, you know some mixed media, and with this one, it's just going to be a rough, you know, penciled in gesture, and then mapping proportion and scale with your with your pencil, and then we'll do the most of it with just straight ink wash and learn to get more control using that ink wash. Take things down in place. So it's important that you do not put the other sections of the paper underneath the area that you're drawing. Notice that I've got both flaps out on the side because if it were underneath then I might potentially accidentally have that ink seep through to the other part of the drawing that I created and I don't want that going on. So ink wash is a wet medium, as you know, which is why I'm taping this down. So I've got my paper ready, my materials ready, and then it's good to have another sheet of paper on the side, like maybe you want to take this other scrap sheet of newsprint that you had laid out for the charcoal piece just to put on the side so that you can test out how black your ink wash is, is going to be before you start drawing with it. So remember the next thing I'm gonna do is figure out um, my still life. I want to not use the same configuration as I had before. So I'm going to you know, reach in and move things around a little bit so that I don't have the same setup. So remember that we still want, you know, objects to break on one side of the piece or another. And then, you know, use the viewfinder to look through and find a good composition that works for you. And then when you feel comfortable with an idea that you've got, you can go ahead and start with the gesture drawing. So I'm going to do a quick gesture of the objects that I'm going to include. Look through your viewfinder to help you, proportion and scale, and get the objects in there that you wanna include. 
And I'm using like a light pencil, like I said, um, about basically a 2H or so. And then with your gesture, you just wanna do like a quick response to what you're seeing so that you're not staring at an empty paper any longer, which can be really intimidating. And just get a rough idea of all those elements out across the page without it being perfect. And then you'll know everything that's gonna be included in your composition. Quick response, like seriously, no more than five minutes on your gesture. And then after that, you're gonna start doing your signing proportion and scale. So before we dig in with the ink wash, we do want to get a bit better idea of our proportion and scale than maybe we've done we would have done before because using ink wash, it's a much more kind of permanent medium. And so once we lay it down, it's not like we can erase it. So we do need to kind of have a little bit more of a refined idea of where things are going to sit on this picture plane before we add that ink wash in. So I'm going to be like reducing my lines more than I would in a different type of drawing just because of the nature of this particular material. So I've got this cone here and then I'm going to get an idea of the you know, the surface of these other elements. So remember, you're going to be siding. Don't forget to hold up your pencil to your still life. Don't move, bend your arm and then compare one object with another to make sure that you're getting it correct in space. I mean, that's a process we're going to be doing over and over again. And by the end of this series of demonstrations this semester, you will be really good at getting those proportions correct quickly. have my <clears throat> still life penciled in lightly and then I'm going to switch to my ink. So this is where you need to be careful not to get too black too fast and um, what I suggest you do is you know keep it super light in the beginning and map in just all of those lightest tones. I just put the ink in water and then I know I've got 
a light tone to start. You also don't want your ink, your brush to be too, too wet. So maybe that you want to have like a piece of paper towel or something on the side <clears throat> to help you like just put a dab in there to make sure it's not overly wet. And then look carefully at your lighting. Make sure you've got it lit dramatically. <clears throat> and so if you're nervous, make a mark on a side sheet of paper there before you put it onto your drawing paper. And dip into the water a lot because it doesn't take much to get a value down on that ink wash. And if it gets too dark too quickly, you can take paper towel and wipe it. See that? So just don't let it dry yet. And you can wipe it away a bit if you need. I mean, you have to get used to striking a balance with getting the right value and not having it be too wet. And remember, you're just looking for shapes of light and dark. So your ink wash in particular, there should not be outlines and there might be areas where the edges disappear. And that's totally okay. That's what you're seeing there. Like if you have a white object on a white background, probably gonna be some spots where that edge disappears. And then also if there's something like, look at which side of that object is defined by a slightly darker value than another, even though it might be a white object. You do see it and it's not defined by an outline, it's defined by a change in value on that shape, as you can see that I'm doing here. So I'm going through and doing pretty much the lightest lights first so that I can give them more control before I dip into the darker tones. <laughs> Whenever you dip into the ink, you know, make sure you test that on the side. Remember anything that's like super white, you're gonna leave the value of the paper itself, the white of the paper. So you have to be careful about like how much of that ink you put down everywhere. So each one of these different uh, media that we're using requires a different type of control as you draw. So if your water gets too full of ink, you might have to go and dump it and get some fresh water so that your objects don't get too dark. Many ink wash techniques are similar to watercolor painting techniques. Like watercolor, lighter values of colors are created by thinning the water uh, thinning the ink with water. Um, so the more water present in the mixture, the lighter the value. Ink wash is best applied during working from light values to dark values, allowing time for the layers to dry before new layers are applied. 
so you can see I'm kind of gradually working my values darker as I proceed so that I make sure I preserve those lighter tones and don't get too dark too fast. So many traditional watercolor techniques like wet on wet produce similar results uh, with ink wash. So one major difference between ink wash and watercolor painting is that ink wash is a bit unforgiving. So mistakes made with ink wash are kind of a little bit more difficult to fix. You know, it's a good idea to work with a test sheet handy. So this way you can minimize mistakes by making sure that you have the right value of ink before applying it to the surface. Okay, so once you have, you know, your values established in your ink wash, you can <clears throat> remove the tape and the newsprint and see how it looks next to the charcoal section. And it really shows you a nice, you know, comparison of the two different media. And then in our next demo, we'll move on and work on a cross contour, cross hatching value on our forms, but this is looking great. I hope you enjoyed working with uh, some ink wash today and developing some values with our progressive drawing. Um, you know, you can play around with ink wash, you know, make some marks, try wet on wet techniques and get some really beautiful things happening in a drawing which combines both um, painterly as well as drawing approaches. So I hope to um, see you again next time with my next demo as we continue working with value and other different types of processes with painting and drawing. So do be sure to subscribe so you get notifications for you know some of those future demos and I will catch you next time.